and good morning right so we are on another little adventure we've just dropped down i'd say two and a half hours of driving we are about to pull in into total at the Fiflui area yeah what a morning it's been lack of drive very chilled okay so that was a very quick stop at the total there pulled up ready to rumble off to the next spot we were going to get a breakfast here but man i think everyone on their way up north decided to do the same thing so we opted just to make coffee by the car and keep on moving sun's up now so it should start warming up Eleven degrees at the moment. It's not terrible, but <clears throat> it is a bit nippy once the windows open. But yeah, Laka on our way to Tembe Elephant Park. Let's see how we go. Oh, okay, so a little update. We are way behind schedule by about two hours. It's now quarter past nine. We had a little bit of a mechanical issue you could call it unfortunately what happened is the bolt that holds the wishbone to the gearbox housing on the passenger side decided it had had enough it had done its 10 years of service and it was ready to go back to its ancestors so it, it decided to exit which resulted in me having a bit of difficulty getting gears in this situation yes you could continue driving without much uh, chance of severe damage from what I understand I could be wrong uh, the problem is where we're going is a bunch of low range and high range 4x4 driving a couple of quick gear changes because we're driving in soft sand and I don't want to be faffing and battling finding the right gear because essentially the wishbone is flopping around underneath the car doing doing this. So we made the decision we'd stop and we'd figure it out. Um, the fix itself cost me nine and thirty. So what ended up happening is I just got some help from a local tire mart, which is owned by Rex Jones. I think it's Rex Jones. I know it's Rex. Just not sure about the surname. Nonetheless, uh, his manager there sorted me out. Friends of mine from Daryl. He Daryl from Gripmax. They they looked after me. Let me use the hoist. Um, I used all my own tools. That's just why I always say carry tools, guys. I can't carry space for everything. This bolt was a specific length in order for it to reach the captive part of the thread inside the gearbox so it was a 50 mil bolt with a 13 head and an 8 mil diameter shaft found one 930 sorted fitted it i'm back on the road everything is good so we've made it we are here at tembe happy days this is my favorite park in kzn it's always a a hit and miss here some some trips are amazing with the most incredible sightings you can ever imagine others are just scenery and nothing else it all just depends on on luck that's that's exactly what it comes down to our last trip here was phenomenal we had the most incredible lion sightings i've ever experienced so I'm hoping to get something even remotely close to that and I'll be happy. So Tembe is a uh, four-wheel drive only access park and yeah you can quite clearly see why.
So we're sitting here waiting our turn. We've come up to a, a pair of mating lions lying in the road. The sun's gonna start going down in about two, two and a half hours. So we're gonna idle here for a bit, just chill. Because we were with a bunch of friends, we've taken turns. So we were the first in, got my pictures, I moved, let the next oak go, and we're basically playing hopscotch like that now. So as soon as the, the guys in the turn are finished, France and Lily, they'll move and then we'll go in. And I'll move a little bit closer this time. At least now everyone's had a good look at them. And uh, I should be able to put up some footage here now. now. Okay, so here's the, the lions we were talking about. They've moved off the road now, and the, the males here, the females behind. They're about three meters from them at the moment. That was a really nice sighting, that. The, the two lions mating. It's always difficult when you, you see stuff like this, because you've got the the tendency to want to actually look at it and enjoy it then you've got the other part of you that wants to take photos and make video and I, I, I hate to say it but create content is, you know it's, it's not something that everyone gets to see all the time two, two lions mating so oh, it was awesome we, we got to, to be quite close to them really really great now as you can see We're enjoying the drive back towards camp. We're now in the Ponweni Hard. Heading, heading down to the hard. This is the, the walkway. You can see now, oh, it's four by four only. This is the majority of the trails. Is that super, super soft sand? That if you don't have four wheel drive and deflate your tires, you you just rip it up and you, you end up digging holes for no reason. Good morning. So we didn't do any filming last night. Sorry, guys. We are not camping the way we normally camp. We're staying in a in a ranger's camp. So there's a mix of guys camping and then cool people like us who got lucky enough to get a. I won't call it a chalet. I'll call it a room. <clears throat> it's got a couple of beds in and a, in a concrete sort of table. But yeah, that's it. It's great. <clears throat> a lot less stuff for us to bring. As a result. But yeah, we just decided uh, because of the variety of people we've got staying by us, we weren't going to do any filming really inside camp. Um, not everyone is comfortable being on on camera. <clears throat> so yeah, here we are. We're going to try and find those uh, mating lions again, see if they've kind of hung around in the same area. So this is the nature of game viewing self-drives. Sometimes you can drive, I mean, it's, it's now 20 to 10 and we've, we've actually seen very, very little today. It's, it's just how it goes. Yesterday was phenomenal, today has been quite, uh, quite boring. Boring in the sense of no sightings, not, not boring as, oh no, this is terrible, I want to go home. And that's what people don't always understand. I, I'm happy to drive like this all day from sunrise to sunset it really doesn't doesn't bug me i'm just grateful to be out in the bush what it does do is it, it creates a slight bit of difficulty around uh, putting together a youtube video because let's face it no one wants to watch 20 to 30 minutes of this this
today we're heading up to what I call the cut line. It's essentially a section of track that runs between South Africa and Mozambique. It's a long drive, uh, it's going to take us a few hours. Traditionally, we don't see any game on that trail, but I drive it each time I come here because it is. It's nice, it's pleasing, I enjoy it, it's a lot of soft sand driving, it, it's very scenic, you get to drive in a place that very few other people drive, it's just a really big, it's just a really nice experience, so we're on our way up there now, we will essentially go through and, well not through, but we'll turn at Muzi at the border post there, and then you run along the fence line all the way to the corner of the park and then we'll come back down the opposite line and then work our way back into the south of the park there's a suspension bridge up here as well which we'll go and have a look at that crosses a river so there won't be a lot of game today but hopefully i get to show you some cool stuff nonetheless so yeah something that i wanted to to point out I've been using a flex adventures fridge for oh, almost two years now it's a first gen TW 75 it's a dual zone they've recently released this really nice app that is now specific to their flex fridges where it gives you a fair bit of information so I'm in a double cab Ford Ranger I'm sitting obviously driving now and my fridge is in my canopy and I can sign into it via the Bluetooth I can then control the left or the right side of the, the fridge. I can adjust the temperature as well as change the degrees to degrees of Celsius or Fahrenheit. I can lock it out so you can't change any settings. I can change the eco and the max mode as well as these important settings here on the bottom which is your battery safe voltage cutoff levels and turn the fridge on and off made it to the suspension bridge this is uh, towards the the eastern side of of the Muzi border post and we're across So this is what I call the cut line, it's a lovely road, I thoroughly enjoy it. So Mozambique is there, we are obviously in the South African side. To, to cross over here is easy, but it's illegal and we don't want to be doing nonsense like that. And these are really sandy tracks, at the moment it's not ridiculously sandy, so four high is doing me just fine, first, second, you can't go a lot faster anyway. But it's one of the reasons that I keep harping on about this place is 100% good for self drives but don't try and sneak in here with a high clearance SUV or a, a 2x4 bucky because you can, you'll can get into the park by, by all means yes but you won't get far before you get stuck and it's just not worth it it's a 4x4 only reserve for a reason that's where we've come from and we still are going. How nice are the clouds? How cool is that? Just as far as you can see from here to the horizon. This is what I meant when I said soft sandy roads. It's not ridiculous. Uh, you dig down it eventually firms up but it's what you're driving on so in terms of preparation for for stuff that could happen out here breakdowns failures getting stuck in the sand uh, animal encounters obviously we try and stay as prepared as possible and a couple of the things we've got that enable us to 
tackle a, a, a solo trail like this is you know we've got our winch good tires good suspension i've got uh, recovery tread recovery boards i've got a spade i've got proper recovery gear i've got 50 meters of uh, rope essentially that i can use with the winch so all of that goes a long way in giving me a bit of peace of mind should something go wrong I've obviously got tools, a couple of spares, I've got good radio comms, I have food, water, provisions. The one thing I don't have much of at the moment is diesel, I'm on half a tank, so that we're going to have to sort out. But yeah, we are fully equipped to, to tackle most things out here, be self-sufficient. But yes, we are well equipped to, to handle ourselves off-grid. Off and survive out here should we have to make a plan and wait for recovery. So we are out nice and early, it's just before six. The mist has rolled in now. I'm not sure how much the GoPro will show you, but it's so beautiful. And it's so unfortunate that I just don't have any means of accurately taking a photograph now where we are to show everybody what utter beauty is occurring so early in the morning look at this currently charging my lithium battery so i'm getting in just shy of 20 amps there if i put off the side lights that's going to jump up to just shy of 30 amps so that battery is on 88% already it was on 74 when I left the camp this morning that's the beauty of lithium it charges quickly lasts a lot longer because of the difference in depth of discharge It's a big outlay, there's no doubt about that, but there's a lot of benefits to having it. So we've encountered this elephant that have pushed this tree over, blocking our, our path. Yes, I can turn around, but it's a, it's a long, it's about a 45 minute drive in the wrong direction on the route I've planned so we're gonna try and try and see what happens yeah okay after about what's it half an hour now we've managed to make a small plan yeah try and see if we can squeeze 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 through it okay oh we should get through here now Right, yo, we got it, we done, we through. Took a while, but we did it. These things are, are well worth the money. Bloody thorns. Incredible out here. Check at that. Bastard thing. Okay, let's, let's go. Yeah, so I should have put gloves on right from the start. Stupid mistake. Drop it on a low range. And we're off. 
So we decided we're going to end up driving the rest of the cut line. So we drove about a third of it yesterday. And we're going to drive the rest of it today and probably come out at the main gates and then go and grab some diesel. So we've climbed up this watchtower. You can see the, the shadow there. Here's the car. This obviously used to be a lookout point that was manned. There's an old battery there. Looks like an owl's egg. Run up to a little light here. Hell of a view up here. So that's Mozambique. That's South Africa. Fucking don't fall here, hey? It's a long way to hospital. No one's gonna send a helicopter here for you. No. Okay, so we've come to the end of the cut line. Well, more or less the end of the cut line, fence line. We found this picnic spot. Very dilapidated and run down. Not uh, looked after at all. So it's actually better for us just to work in the parking area. The picnic spot's through here. But one table's been flipped over, the other table's just like full of bat shit and bird shit and whatnot. So we've set up here. Quick and easy lunch. Ostrich vorse, pasta salad. That's it. Simple setup like this allows for a quick and easy lunch, brunch or breakfast, whatever you're doing. Ideally, we'd obviously like a, a fancier setup, but I mean, the traditional canopy and drawers and fridge, it works for us. Ticks the box. Check out my little table I picked up from the guys at TJM. They hooked me up. It is a aluminium folding camp table, so it all folds up into a bag smaller than a traditional chair bag. It weighs about three and a half kilos and it can take 30 kg load. Each leg is individually adjustable. So it doesn't really matter what surface you're working on, you can have a level table. That's a win. So this is the, the water tower. You can hear the water flowing inside there. The Ellies love to come up here and pinch a little bit of the man, man-made, man-provided water. We're back in the, the southern section of the park now. And here we are at the top. You can see these are the little elephant pathways here used by all the critters and creatures out here. Like veins and arteries of the bushveld. Let's go and take a quick look at that water. Yeah, well, this fence was not going to do anything to them, was it? This is not even going to act as a deterrent. All the bees coming to get their, their little bit of water and moisture here as well.
and just like that our six days come to an end it is now 25 past five we are creeping our way towards the reserve gate it's about an hour's drive from where we camped if we take the most direct route and then we've got a long drive home as normal it's been fantastic always good to spend time in the bush and if you've made it this far in the video thanks for watching